Hello guys, welcome to our second ever Kingston Hangout. Today we are discussing SD cards with uh, Kingston's Flash Business Manager, Andrew. How are you doing today, Andrew? Good. Thanks, Todd, and welcome. So let's uh, get right into it. We'll open up for a little bit of Q&A in just a bit. Um, real quick, before we get started, though, I want to let you know, exclusively for our Hangout viewers, we are doing a Twitter contest. We're giving away some SD cards, some of the top of the line ones that we have in with us today. So uh, use hashtag Kingston Hangout and tweet or retweet um, in order to enter, and we'll make the announcement of who won at the end of the Hangout. So let's get right into some of our topics. Um, the first one that everybody wants to discuss is size. Um, what are the differences between SD cards, micro SDs, and mini SDs? Yeah, uh, so um, the main difference is what they're plugged into. Um, so the devices nowadays typically support either micro SD or full size SD. So micro SD card here, uh, the small one, uh, is typically used in phones or tablets, as well as the GoPro. 3 um, and other mo mobile devices that support micro SD. So you would look for the micro SD logo. Uh, full size SD card will look something like this, uh, and it's typically used in uh, cameras, uh, uh, either point and shoot as well as digital SLR. Okay. Uh, and typically, what you'll want to do is look at the uh, logos to see what um, devices uh, or what the host device supports. So this is a full size SD card. And then you would look for a micro SD uh, that's seen on this logo here. OK. Um, what can you tell me about what devices use which, and um, basically which one is optimized for each one of those devices? Um, well, typically, it's up to the host. So um, it, it depends on what port they have. So um, on a point and shoot camera, the slot is actually a full size slot. So you full just look system. for comparable logos um, is the best way to do it. Okay, great. Um, talking about capacity, what you know, some people say the bigger the better. Some people have specific needs in mind. Can we kind of go over what capacity is going to these cards and what they should be used for? Yeah. Um, well, a lot of capacity has to do with what um, the host device is compatible with. So uh, you are limited based on um, the technology. So if a host device only supports SD, then you can only use a card that's up to two gig. So the SD logo or micro SD logo is anywhere up to 2 gig. Uh, SDHC is anywhere from 4 gig to 32 gig. So if your device supports SDHC, then you could pick anywhere from 4 to 32. And then if you have a newer device that supports SDXC, uh, then that device will support 64 all the way up to 2 terabyte, even though 2 terabyte doesn't exist today. Uh, the, the largest we produce is 128 on the SD. Car. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is if you, let's say, have a SDHC device and you try to plug in an SDXC card, you'll either get an error message, it'll ask you to format, um, potentially in some cases it'll let you use 32 of the 64. Uh, in any of those cases, you could run into problems later uh, when you try to format. If you can write to some of the card and have format later, uh, you could run into some issues there. The reason is is formatting for SDXC is XFAT, uh, for SDHC it's FAT32, and for SD it's FAT. So you run into some formatting issues. What's the easiest way to identify what device uses which one of those types of cards when somebody is you know, looking at the shopping for a device or the shopping for one of our cards? How do they line those two up? Yeah, the best way is to look at the manufacturers of the host devices. Um, uh, maybe their user manual or go on their website, they'll typically have the logo that they support, or they'll say it supports SDXC cards or SDHC cards. Um, we're talking about SDXC, and we're talking about how it currently maxes out at 128 gigabytes. Um, is it on the radar to get larger? What, do we have a timeline about capacity when we might see something larger? And also for our micro SDs, uh, we get that question quite frequently. Yeah, we're reviewing uh, some of the higher capacities, both on S. SD as well as micro SD. Uh, for SD, the next one would be 256 gig. And the plan is to uh, introduce that later in the year. And then for micro SD, the next step is 128 gig uh, micro. Uh, um, that is still under review. The chips that are used inside of that, um, we haven't yet qualified yet. Um, 
they aren't currently available, but the plan is also to roll that out at the end of the year. The end of the year. Okay. So taking a look here, your uh, question says, when will it be available worldwide? I think that's basically what we just yeah. covered. Um, let's get into a little bit about speed choices just to start. Um, we're talking about the overall rating system, uh, the original rating system compared to the new rating system now. Um, can you go through the diff different classes and basically what that means? Yes. Um, so all the cards um, after the, I mean, starting with SDHC and then SDXC, um, have started to use class ratings. And this helps the, the customer understand of what performance the drive can do. Uh, so starting out, you have uh, class speed, which is found on um, SDHC as well as SDXC devices. If you have a class 4, four card, that means it will uh, sustain 4 megabytes a second read and write. If you have a class 10 card, it will sustain uh, 10 megabytes a second read and write. Um, as you move into uh, what they call UHS speed, so that's the motor or the, or the bus speed, uh, ultra high speed bus. Um, then you go into uh, UHS 1 and UHS 2. This is the mode that you can use. And then they have different speeds as well. Uh, they have a uh, speed class 1, which is 10 megabytes a second, as well as a speed class 3, which is 30 megabytes a second. Along with that minimum speed, uh, you may also see the maximum speed on some of the uh, parts. And what this is is for continuous burst mode. This is mostly for the photographer okay. shooting okay. as many photos as they can. Um, this On this card right here, it shows 90 megabytes a second read and 80 megabytes per second write. So uh, that is the most speed you're going to get. And then this one happens to be a UHS-1 card, class 3. So minimum speed is 30 megabytes a second. Okay, and just to recap, when you're taking a look at our product packaging, if you don't see a Right or a read, um, I'm sorry, a write speed on the packaging. What does that usually mean? Uh, typically, it doesn't have much of a maximum speed. Okay. Uh, we're only looking at the minimum speeds. Uh, speed is also related to what you're doing. Um, so a class four card will be plenty for taking pictures with your point and shoot camera, um, and could also work with your digital SLR. But if you're starting to get into some high capacity cards, then um, or high capacity pictures, then you you may want a class 10. If you're shooting video, um, you definitely want to move up to the class 10 speeds because you want that minimum sustained speed. I gotcha. um, and then if your device supports UHS-1, which it does have to, um, then you can get in, into um, live broadcast video um, and then our, our kind of our fastest card, which is the U3 UHS-1, uh, will support 4K, 2K video. So the, the, the class relates to how you use yeah, the devices. All right. just want to remind everyone, Andrew brought up a great uh, reminder for me as he picked up the product. We're actually giving away five of these cards. And what you do is you go to Twitter, and you're going to tweet with the hashtag Kingston Hangout. We're giving away five of them at the end. So stick around for the end of the Hangout. We'll make the announcement shortly thereafter. Again, use Kingston Hangout in the hashtag. Let's get into a little bit about speed classes. Um, this is kind of the tricky one. This is the one where everybody tends to have their questions. There's some confusion about which speed goes with which class mm -hmm. um, and how to optimize. Can you get into a little bit about our newer products, some of the, the UHS stuff, one and two, and discuss some, some of the new things we have going on? Yeah, so um, for SD cards, it's rather complicated. I showed you this before. Um, you see the class speeds. I think everybody got it more comfortable with this over the last couple of years. And then now you're starting to see new cards out there that have UHS-1 or UHS-2, uh, and then new class speeds. Um, so it is rather tricky for the user. Uh, the first step on UHS is looking at the type of mode it has. So if your device supports UHS, you, it'll either support UHS-1 or UHS-2. The difference is, is UHS-1 um, looks kind of the back like a standard SD card with the number of pins. It looks very similar. UHS-2 adds a whole second row of, um, of coils so that it can maximize the speed. So for UHS-2 devices, there's not that many available yet because there is an interface difference on the, on the host side. They have to change the, the port. So UHS-2 is, is, is really, I think you probably have a handful of devices worldwide, so it's really new. 
Uh, and then in terms of the speed classes, it's similar to the classes, but they look different. So if you have a UHS-1 card, uh, class 1, um, then that will be 10 megabytes a second. A class 3 is 30 megabytes a second. Uh, class 1 would be used for any of your high-definition um, recording, and then the class 3 would be really for 4K, 2K video. So. OK, great. Looks like we've got another question here. Um, this one's coming in from, it says, uh, I'm using Kingston SDHC 32 gigabyte class 10. Is there any difference compared with this new card that we're talking about? I'm, guess, I'm assuming he's probably talking about the class 2, or the UHS 2. Um, potentially, yeah. So uh, th is there a difference? between kind of our standard class 10 and uh, a UHS-1 card. Uh, the technology is slightly different. So a class 10 um, card refers to, it, it's using a high-speed bus, so it maxes out its performance at 25 megabytes a second. UHS um, increases that and has a maximum UHS of uh, either 50 megabytes a second or has a, um, a maximum transfer rate of 50 megabytes a second, or potentially 104 megabytes a second on mm -hmm. even the faster side. Uh, the best way to look at this is, is looking at our packaging to determine um, what you get out of it. So if you have a device that supports SDXC, UHS-1, um, then this card will tell you that this performs at a minimum of 10 megabytes a second, and then a maximum of 90 read and 45 write for this card. Gotcha. I'm going to take another question here. What about durability in SD cards? Discuss a little bit about which, you know, any type of these cards that would do better than the other, or basically, you know, what can they be used for? Is it, is it meant for outdoor ruggedness? Yeah, I mean, the, the cards all meet the SD Card Association specs. Um, they all uh, utilize flash memory. Um, so durability-wise, they all um, work really well. Um, and and can withstand a lot. Um, we hear a lot of cases where people put it in their washing machine, <laughs> pull it out in their dryer, and plug it into their system as long as the car is dry, and it'll work. It seems um, like that happens to everybody. Yes. So people. they're very durable in that, in that part. I think also when people say durability, they ask for the, life, the lifespan of the card. Um, on the lower end cards, let's say a class 4 card, um, it's utilizing the, um, the best value NAND that's out there out there. So the longevity of that isn't very much, but typically a class 4 card is used in a point-and-shoot camera. Uh, if you have a 8 gig and a point-and-shoot camera, it will take you a long time to fill that up. Um, so um, it, it, it'll last for you a lifetime because um, even if you're taking a lot of pictures, um, it, it can be written all the way through, erased, written, erased, uh, hundreds of times before uh, it goes bad. And then the lifespan of the card itself, um, the memory that's on there will last uh, 10 years. Okay. One more question looks like. Um, Mario asks, do you have the same type of new tech on micro SD cards? I use my phone for lots of pictures, videos, docs, and apps. Uh, that's a good question. Um, and yes, uh, the technology is similar. Uh, the form factor of micro is a little smaller. So um, the performance usually lags a little bit in terms of when it's released. So so for a full-size SD card, we're a couple steps ahead of Micro. Um, but Micro, de micro SD do does have Class 4, um, which is great for just if you're taking pictures on your phone. And then it also has a Class 10 if you're using your phone for video, for instance. Okay. Um, and then uh, coming out later in the year, we're increasing um, the maximum performance of our Micro SD as well. Uh, if people are starting to use this in devices like the GoPro, then that uh, can shoot high definition video as well as um, take some pretty good uh, uh, pictures as well. Okay. Uh, just one last reminder we are doing our giveaway. Uh, hustle over to Twitter, use the hashtag Kingston Hangout. And when you do that, you'll be entered to win. Uh, we're giving away five of these 64 gigabyte UHS cards, and um, we'll, we'll announce the winners towards the end of the show. Um, also, where to buy um, some of these products, you can go to our website, 
uh, using your region, select the product you wish to purchase, and when you um, select the size and capacity of that card, you're going to click buy and it brings up um, several options for you to choose from for re retailers where to find our cards. Um, anything to add, Andrew? Uh, there's one other thing I'd like to add. I don't know if anybody's asked this question yet, is uh, formatting the cards. Uh, it comes up a lot. Um, just to give you an idea, uh, idea, most of the devices themselves will format via the SD card spec. Uh, Windows will also format via the SD card spec as well. Uh, but just to let you know, if you go to sdcard.org, uh, there's also a formatting tool there if you want to uh, put the card back to factory um, settings. Okay. There's actually uh, one more question before we go. Um, it says, are all these classes backward compatible, meaning can I use uh, 3 in devices which is 11 or i1? i1. Um, I1. Yeah, the, uh, in terms of the backwards compatible, they're not backwards compatible in terms of um, their physical uh, na nature. So if the camera itself supports UHS-1, then the camera can use UHS-1. If the camera doesn't support UHS, then if you put a UHS card in there, it's not going to perform at that speed. Um, the physical, the cards themselves have a physical maximum, and the host device has a physical maximum. So you have to make sure you line up both in order to get the maximum speed. Okay. We're going to go ahead and wrap up our Hangout here. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, if you missed the Hangout or if you want to rewatch it, you're going to go to our Google Plus page. The video link will be there in our timeline. Um, it auto-uploads to our YouTube channel as well. That's youtube.com forward slash Kingston. Thanks, guys. Thank you.